Who am I? Everyone has countless questions regarding this matter. Humans are not born into and living in the complete world, but rather are living inside their own mind's world, which overlaps the world. This is why human beings are incomplete. In order to change these incomplete fake beings to complete beings, the world of incompletion must be demolished and they must be resurrected in the real world. This is how they can become real people and live in the eternal heaven and paradise where there is no death. A person who is born here is the master of the true world and a king. Just like Jesus, who was resurrected and came out of the stone tomb three days after his death, the one who is resurrected and has raptured is the master. When one has the true world inside one's mind, that person is the master of heaven, man, and earth. Hi, I'm Sherry. Thank you for being so open-minded. You may have asked yourself at some point in your life this age-old question, who am I? I'll give you a little bit of background about myself and then I'll explain to you how it was that I was able to solve this age-old riddle. I live every day now with confidence and gratitude. Since my worries and stresses are gone, my acid reflux naturally disappeared. But most importantly, I was able to realize who I am and why I live. I'll let you know how you too can find what it is that you've been searching for. When I was five years old, I asked my mother, where did I come from? My mother paused for a moment and then carefully said to me, that's something you'll get to learn about when you're older. She must have thought I was asking about the birds and the bees, but that's not what I was referring to at all. I wasn't asking about how this physical body was made. What I wanted to know was, where did I come from before I was born to my parents? Who am I? Why do I exist? And what will happen to me when I die? At that young age, that thought of death really scared me. Another major source of my anxieties was from the fact that my mother and father were constantly fighting. There were so many countless nights that I would wake up in the middle of the night to hear them fighting, screaming, shouting. And this constant state of stress that I was in led me to have acid reflux at a very young age. By the time I was in third grade, I was suffering from insomnia. And school proved to be very difficult for me because I couldn't concentrate. These difficulties followed me into my adult life. Later on, when I moved out on my own at the age of 22, I briefly thought I felt some freedom. But that sense of freedom was very short-lived because soon after, the constant thinking, worries, stress, the anxieties, they all came flooding back. And so while I was living my daily life, going through the motions, going to my nine to five corporate job and then playing on the weekends with my friends, I never stopped searching for the place where I could find the answers to life and existence. I was always looking for that needle in the haystack. And so I did all kinds of things. I read all kinds of so many books. I studied about handwriting analysis and dream analysis and palm reading and astrology, Eastern philosophy, Western philosophy, you name it. All in the name of trying to figure out who I was. I even went to all different kinds of religions. I tried to read the Bible, the Buddha sutras, but quite honestly, as an ordinary human being, I found those holy scriptures, while they seemed to be saying good things, it was very difficult for me to understand what they were really trying to say. And so I kept searching, and finally, in the year 2004, I found the needle in the haystack. I heard about this place where I could come to, to find the answers from within, and also enlighten all the principles of the world. 
When I got there, my teachers told me that the reason why I was not able to know who I was was because of the human mind that I possessed, which is what actually each person possesses. That human mind is the very thing that is blocking, blocking us from seeing and becoming the truth, which is the universe, which is God. And so my teachers told me that all it was that I had to do was get rid of that thing called me and all the baggage that came with it. And they provided me with a set of directions, so simple, so simple to follow. And I was so humbled that I actually had the opportunity, an ordinary person such as myself, to be able to enlighten all the answers. And so for the next 17 years, I diligently meditated, discarding all of the human mind, which consists of karma, habits, and body. Humans are automatic cameras. From the day that humans are born, through the eyes, nose, ears, mouth, and this body, humans are constantly taking pictures of everything that is in the world and simultaneously imprinting them into the brain. Like this. In doing so, this is how humans created their own little world. It is a world full of pictures. It is not the true reality. It is entirely fake. And each person lives inside of his own mind's world. By us humans taking pictures of the world, that was plagiarizing God's world. God's world is the universe. The universe is the origin and the creator of all creations. The universe itself is also God. Because the universe is infinite and we cannot draw it, we'll just represent it this way. Here, from this universe, instead of living here, as we came out into the world, we took pictures of everything into the mind's world. That's what sin is. We turned our backs on the world. And so this is why human has stress. All we need to do is eliminate this karma, which is made of the life lived. And then the habits. The habits are the minds that we inherit from our parents and all the ancestors. So just like we inherited our looks from our parents and ancestors, we also inherited the minds. And those minds are what dictate our behavior, dictates our behaviors. And then this body is also the human mind. This body is also an illusion concocted from the countless pictures we took of our own selves over a lifetime. You eliminate this karma, habits, and body. When all of that is gotten rid of, at that time, there will be absolutely nothing. And at that time, you can see God. When you are reborn from here, this universe, then at all times, you have God and heaven within you. This is something that you have to do while you are alive. It's not something that you can do after the lights have gone out and your body dies. Humans, their human mind world overlaps the universe like this. And so people mistakenly think that their human mind world is the world itself, but these are actually two entirely different things. There is no God, Buddha, Allah inside of this human mind world. There is no heaven there either. And so it's very simple. If you just eliminate this karma, habits, and body like this, and you eliminate and continue to eliminate until there's nothing more to get rid of, then only the universe, which is God, will remain. So for me, after I diligently got rid of all of my karma, habits, and body, and only the universe was remaining, then I was reborn from that existence. 
at that time, it was so amazing because all the stress and the weight of the world that I felt, that heavy stone in my chest that I felt like I carried around everywhere I went, whatever I did, it was really, really all gone. And I could finally understand all the principles of the world. The Bible, the Buddha Sutras, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, all those holy scriptures made sense. And I finally understood who I am and why I live. I came to the world. We all did. We came to the world in order to live. Same goes for you. And so here, all we need to do is eliminate this karma, habits, and body and go back to the universe, which is the origin, which is God, and be reborn from there. That is the complete human, human completion. For someone to say that they've been reborn without having gotten rid of this, this is just, that means it's just a recycled version of their old fake self. You have to get rid of this first and then go back to here. And then from here, the universe, which is truth, be born again. And that is the true rebirth. You may be wondering, how long does it take to accomplish this? Let's think of it this way. In the past, maps were on paper. But now that we have GPS technology, it's very easy to get to where we need to go, even if we've never been there before. And in the same way, if religion is like the map, this meditation is like the GPS system. It will take you there quickly, efficiently, very simplified. You can get there in no time. If you throw all these things away, go back to the truth and reborn from there, you live forever, you never die.